This is, uh, I'm really excited about this panel. <laughs> so uh, this is actually, um, I I'd like to say the, the woman in the middle here, Mary, uh, she's one of the people who has played out my fate here in the UK because when I first came to the, what was called the Henry Stewart Dam Symposium, uh, I think it was 11 or 12 years ago, I met Mary and she was working at the British Museum at the time. And that was my first dam project in the UK. Uh, and ever since then, I've had many wonderful uh, projects. And now I work with the Art Fund, a wonderful organization that I'll let them tell you about. Uh, so I'll just have each of you introduce yourselves and then maybe Mary, you can give some background on the Art Fund when it comes to you. Uh, hi, yeah, I'm James Feltham. Um, I look after the um, dam at Art Fund. Um, I've been in this area for quite a while now. Um, started at the BBC and then went to ITV and EMI Records. Spent a couple of years in the United States working at Fox um, and very luckily landed myself with a, a fantastic job here at Art Fund looking after the, the new dam. Uh, so I'm Mary Pitt. I've done lots of roles at Art Fund, but at the moment I head up tech, so I'm responsible for optimising our tech stack. So I'm very interested in a lot of what Jared was saying earlier. Um, just a bit of context around Art Fund. We're, we're a charity. We exist to support UK museums and galleries. Um, we market a product, uh, the National Art Pass. Um, which brings all sorts of benefits, including reduced price entry to a vast number of, of UK museums and galleries. Um, we uh, support them in all sorts of ways, uh, one of which is giving out grants, um, and the particular bit that I'm going to be talking about today relates to grants we give to museums and galleries to um, buy works of art. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Liz Workman. I'm head of creative. I've worked for Art Fund for about 16 years now. Before that, I was at Tate. Um, I head up the creative part of Art Fund, um, so I oversee, have a team of designers and image uh, assistants who commission a lot of photography. Um, and I oversee all creative work from stuff produced by advertising agencies to in-house, um, yeah, digital, print, everything, really. So we're, we're hoping to keep this conversational. Uh, and have a chat and just hear a little bit about how the Art Fund has evolved uh, in, recent, in recent years. So first question would be around uh, how did the Art Fund get involved in DAM and why? Um, so when I, I the mic a little bit closer, so you're joined there, there. in 2014, um, we had quite a tricky situation. It was immediately apparent. Um, the, the grants we give to help uh, museums buy works of art. Uh, it's been going on for about 100 years. Um, we had a huge wealth of assets. Uh, part of the grant conditions is that they provide us with um, high resolution images of, of the work of art. Um, and these were just scattered across the file server. Nobody could ever find them. Um, they were getting overwritten. They were getting deleted. We knew we needed uh, a repository to put them in, and uh, we went out and got a digital asset management system, which we largely used as a picture library. Um, it had all sorts of business benefits. It made things findable, retrievable. We uh, did a lot of work uh, setting up the metadata and um, tagging our images so we could do sort of intuitive searches on them, so marketing teams and external agencies who did picture research for us could also search these assets. Um, so that was great as far as it went. <laughs> and stage. so that was, what year was that when you that brought in that went, old system? No, it went live in 2015. 2015, okay. Mm -hmm. So how did that implementation go with the first dam? Uh, it went fairly smoothly. It was, it was as ever, more work than we expected, I think, um, sorting out the metadata, just getting our images in a state that we could get them onto the dam. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of six months of work. Uh, and we, we outsourced the keywording. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a sizable project. Um, but then something uh, happened next. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then um, I think our kind of ambitions grew, and, and it was became quite clear to us that we were maintaining assets in two places. We had an asset library on our CMS system, a web content management system. 
we were maintaining all, all of the art we've helped buy images that we just put into the dam were also on that, that asset library. We were kind of duplicating them. And we wanted to power images on our website from the digital asset management system. When we looked into the integrational capabilities of the system we had got, it wasn't really going to be possible. Okay, so we had to make a big move, <laughs> big changes. So uh, you were thinking, obviously, about other benefits that DAM could provide. You were sort of educating yourself. So uh, what was happening on the creative operations side? Um, well, so we, for that initial DAM, could only really store works of art. It was like one big bucket. So you couldn't put any other assets on. It was great for finding those, but if we had kind of commissioned photography of people and places, it kind of, in you search for British Museum, you just get kind of all of the works of art we'd help for British Museum, and then a few of these kind of commissioned photography. So I, you know, my team, we were designing stuff, images t and text. What we were finding was that we were getting, you know, great text, but the images weren't, we weren't getting what we needed because a lot of the, this kind of content was stored on our servers and not on the dams. So people were going to find works of art if they needed any other images. That was quite a long process, and it was putting a lot of pressure on my team because we couldn't produce things as far, you know, we weren't getting what we wanted. So there was that side of thing. How do we get all these other types of images on? But then looking at, as an organisation, becoming more omnichannel, we were producing more kind of podcasts, video content, um, as social media obviously ex had exploded over those kind of five years. We were doing so much more resizing, repurposing, um, things like that. And it was how do we, how can we use them as a tool and part of that creative operation side to make those workflows much quicker, much easier, stop this repetition of, uh, I think there's loads of people have said, of, uh, you know, one person getting something, resizing, downloading it to their desktop, someone else doing the same thing, creating all these multiple versions everywhere. So how could we improve that? And looking at, you know, kind of that side. So that became a real drive. Actually, we could have this one place where everything is stor stored, take massive serve server pressure. I think like the design teams, we take about 50% of the server up with all our files and what was happening is we never had time to go and clean that up. So someone else would come and clean it up and delete all the links and we'd go in and we'd have these kind of InDesign files with no images attached and just general frustration about that kind of management. So actually saw it as an opportunity. Well, let's get try and get kind of this single source of truth, final design files on there. You know, the connectors with uh, Adobe working, obviously APIs to, to every, all of our other systems. So yeah, I think there was, we haven't got there yet, but we want to, that's the plan. But there was some uh, culture change and education that needed to happen. Um, DAM was not necessarily known and understood by everybody in the organization. So maybe um, talk a bit about the culture change that uh, you had to prepare yeah. as you were getting ready to launch or getting ready to actually implement yeah, this yeah. new dam. As Christine said, people were really important. So we knew that we had a lot of duplicate processes going on, that one person over here would be uh, talking to a museum and getting exhibition pictures on, and they were using those for a leaflet. Then over here, someone else was putting website content, going to the same museum, asking the same question. So we knew that the, all these kind of duplicate processes were going on and images being stored. So we did then set out, um, Mary and myself, um, to engage people with a set of use cases, create use cases, um, which we then formed as kind of a basis business for the business case as well, and showing how much. And I think that really did un uncover a lot of, oh my goodness, look at all this stuff that's happening, um, and that we needed to, to deal with the process behind kind of image gathering or, or asset creation as well. So we, are, we try to engage everyone um, who, I mean, we're a small organisation, there's only 60 of us, so it, it's not that hard. We had um, kind of sort of quite a few people involved in creating those use cases. Um, and then, again, in sandboxing, when we had the kind of vendors that are our list of vendors that we were thinking of. So quite early on, people coming along that, with that journey. I think we've still got a big work, amount of work to do with culture change. It's not a quick fix. Um, and what we've uncovered, whilst we've, we, now we've got the, our new dam in, is there are so many processes and kind of questions that are coming up from that that we have to deal with. So I think it's an ongoing thing. So while we were uh, selecting a dam, at the same time we were interviewing for 
a damn manager, which is always fun. I think actually, I'm, I have to say I'm so pleased. I think in the last year I've helped six or seven clients hire a damn manager, which is really exciting. I mean, even two, three years ago, I had such a hard time getting people to just hire a system owner, you know, someone to really own the system uh, and manage it. And so uh, we got that job description out there while we were negotiating with the vendor, and James was the one to emerge victorious um, <laughs> in the role. So um, you came in, and, and what, what, what was it like for you when you started? Well, again, for me, it was a, it was a very different, a different part of the business, um, but it was... It was digital assets. It was what I'm used to working in. It was it was interesting to start in a new organisation to get to know the culture of the organisation initially, um, and then to see the movement from the old digital asset management system to to the new version. Um, and the sort of the although how that sounds simple, taking a bunch of assets, moving from one place to another, it was the complications that came up when you go slightly deeper into that. So firstly getting hold of all the assets, making sure you've got all the assets, then making sure you've got all the data to go with all those assets, then making sure that all that data links to all those assets on the new system. And I think moving from, from the asset management system, one of the things was that, that the data had to be in a certain format for it to be linked with um, the asset on the new system. So it was a semicolon, not a comma. So all that with the types of work, with the medium of work, it was it was it was it was um, data that had to be amended to make sure that once it was it was passed across, once it was ingested on the new system, it was still correct. So that was that was um, you know we started with the the MVP was was, was the 12,000 images we had from from the first um, asset management system to get those in place to get make sure that all the data was uh, correct, properly linked, and at the same time adding more data from other systems that we had in place. So we had things like museum partner IDs, which we wanted to have linked on the new system and making sure that data was directly linked with the data we already had. I have to commend James for dealing with some uh, very hairy spreadsheets. Uh, we had some moments where we'd have a, I don't know, 14,000 line spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. 40, how, how big? 42. 42. We had one that was 42,000 and all of a sudden you have this overwhelming moment where, okay, we've exported all this data. We've got it in a spreadsheet, but then it's sort of, oh my God, are we actually going to go through every line? How are we going to do this? Uh, so James did a lot of work there, um, but we got it all in there. You got it all in there. I didn't really do anything. Oh, so. we, well, let's go. We did. Um, but again, I think that's when it, on, on you, you've got to be aware that, that you have these time scales, and sometimes they do take a bit longer than you sometimes first expect because these things do come up and raise their heads, and you've got to be ready for that. For sure. So maybe. Uh, Maybe go back, uh, we're, we're already talking about the migration, but um, let's talk a bit about the actual implementation of the, the system itself. Uh, you guys did it pretty quickly, I mm -hmm. think, uh, all things considered. Uh, how, did, how did the um, implementation itself go for you? How was it managed? I don't know, who should ask that well, one? Uh, take um, that one, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gone pretty smoothly so far. I think you've probably gathered from what James and Teresa and, and Liz have said, we, we kicked off with a whole lot of use cases that uh, we were using for the sort of procurement process. We're not that far on the journey. Um, I think it's, it's, it's been a massive effort, this minimum viable product MVP, is, as James calls it, of, of getting off our old system and onto the new one, raised a lot of challenges in itself. And I think what's, what's quite interesting, it's kind of people using it in Art Fund is going well, but they're using it very much as they use the existing system. And a lot of the use cases, we had some sort of a plan as to how we were going to approach those use cases one by one and prioritize them and in, in true agile fashion. <laughs> uh, all sorts of other pressures have kind of come in on us as we've been going through this process. So uh, some of the kind of creative operations use cases we haven't gone on to as quickly as we wanted. Really f simple kind of fundamental things have come up. We had a bit of a crisis with our on-premise storage. It's like, God, we've got to get all the videos off the, off the file server now. So that's all hitting James sort of from left field. Um, so in terms of implementation, I think we, we knew it was going to take a long time. I think it's taking even longer than we thought, but we're, we're also reacting to kind of changes in objectives, ch changes in, in sort of the pressures that, you know, the, the challenges that are facing us. 
And I think it's also uh, definitely true that James is heroically dealing with slightly belated attempts within Art Fund to optimize our tech stack, to have a proper data architecture and apply that across all our systems. So when he describes having to deal with the, the kind of level of if the right IDs to use so we can link data across our systems, it's we're, we're, we're rolling out this dam in uh, simultaneously with some exercises that in an ideal world we might have done up front. Um, so that's kind of playing into it too. But I think it's, it, it kind of works quite well, the, the sort of agile yeah. approach. Um, you know, we, we, we're constantly reevaluating what we want to do next. So yeah, and I think it's I think that's, really that's, a, that's a good way yeah. <laughs> to approach the flexible, it. We weren't, I think we didn't realize how flexible we needed to be because we set off, off on this journey with this idea that you know, the first thing we wanted to do was to really prove that this new dam was different from our old dam, uh, was to do kind of full website integration and that API to be working and it to be powering all images on the website. We, just because of kind of other internal priorities, that's not going to happen um, until kind of Q4 this year because there is a kind of a, a backlog with our developers. We just can't, uh, our website developers, we just can't get there to that point. So that's, uh, so, uh, that's us constantly shifting. Okay, well, we can't do that. That was our kind of our big, our big kind of win to show that like, this is a different system. Um, what else can we do? And looking at, I think it's really important that now we've got this new dam that because we have launched it with exactly what was on, on our old system, that it doesn't become irrelevant and gets mothballed. We need to keep on uh, proving why this is different and what else we can do. So we're looking now at other ways. So actually, we've been bringing in some more of the creative operation stuff, which we didn't think we were going to be doing quite so soon. So we've got the kind of brand guidelines module and building that out and looking at the, the way we can do that. We're starting to look at the workflow option, which at first I thought wasn't going to be, uh, for the way we work in, within the design team, kind of internally, I didn't think that was had much use because I think, you know, people interactions and the way things are approved. Um, but actually from talking to some of our marketing colleagues, we realised for a certain bit of work, which was um, museums, we produce like bags for them and they need to put their logo on and there's this approval. But actually the workflow module could start to work in, in that way. So I think it's just shift, we're just constantly shifting and trying to find ways we can get it to work for us. Yeah, I, I think the dam being, being the new dam, it, it being new, it was allowed to ask certain questions of data. So it started pushing a little bit of the, of the tech side about how we, our terminology across regions, across museum partners, across IDs, it actually, it was because it was new it was, and it needed this, it was, it was able to, to construct different conversations about different pieces of, of, of how um, data was, was looked at over the, over the organization. Very intense conversations. <laughs> Very <laughs> Dramatic intense. conversations. Uh, so we, we have some great questions on Slido. Uh, so some people would like to know uh, where the dam manager is in the structure of the organization. Uh, and maybe we can tie that into uh, uh, how did you know you needed a dam manager besides, mm -hmm. besides me insisting? <laughs> how else did you know? And, and how, does, how does James, uh, where did you decide to put him and why? Yeah, yeah. Um, so James sits within my team, so, and I sit within the overall marketing team, so my team, design team um, uh, sits there. So James is part of that team. Uh, that is partly because historically with our old dam, we had an image coordinator um, who used to manage that. She sat there. Um, but it made sense because actually, um, I, for, probably because I've been for, there for 16 years, I've got a huge knowledge of the whole organisation and all the image, various image um, needs. So, um, and plus, uh, I oversee kind of all the photography commissioning, which we do a lot of, um, and kind of really my team, either whether it's for, for an agency, for kind of our... Uh, digital, whatever, we're kind of using the main use, user of the images. So actually having that really close when, when it's being set up and looking at the taxonomy that we, you know, I've got quite a close kind of uh, knowledge and kind of able to influence actually we need it to work like this. This is the way that the most important part of search for us is to search for terms or something like that and actually to help steer James um, w with actually what's the, the best knowledge because I think it's quite hard when you come in new 
to a role and it's a new, you're setting up something new, how do you know what the needs of the organisation work and how does it actually work? So James has done a great job of going out and meeting everyone and talking to them, which is a really important part, but actually to have that overview of it and actually because we are quite small there was no one else really because Mary also is very closely involved from the technical point of view and so we work I think I'm bringing kind of well actually how's the dam going to be used making sure it's quite user focused um, and not just kind of uh, dealing on the on the tech side always or kind yeah. of the back end of it. Well, I think it was from Liz as well that, that even though the Art Fund is, is a, a small organisation it's different areas work in very specific ways. Mm. And that's how they'd always worked. So to have that insight from Liz and Mary, who'd been at the, at the organisation for, 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 for a while, was, was, was very important for me to be able to, to have the knowledge of how different areas um, worked and liked to work, to, to make sure that I knew that when trying to produce this dam as, a, as an outfacing um, thing that, that the users would want to use. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a constant question at Art Fund, how, how do we organise ourselves and, you know, whether people should sit in the tech team, whether they should sit more in the business areas. We've, we've largely gone for the latter in keeping with making sure we're kind of end user focused <laughs> in everything we do. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think if, in my team, if we'd been in charge, we'd have been busy optimising the tech stack, the data architecture and goodness knows what else and possibly not delivering <laughs> business benefit in quite the time scale we needed to. So it, it's always that, that sort of balance. So a question for James. Um, what in your background uh, has helped you, uh, has sort of lended to your dam, um, you know, success and, and sort of, is there anything unexpected uh, that you found in your latest dam role that you weren't necessarily prepared for in your past roles? Um. Not overly. I mean, I've been sort of doing this sort of thing for a long time now. Um, I started off at the BBC back in 1986, I think, um, where really the digital assets really, we started doing digitising photography there. Um, and we started off with this brilliant system called Elvis, which was the electronic visual imaging system, brilliantly named. We, we, we came up with that. Um, and that was developed to help... Um, produce images for graphic design, for news and current affairs, for the general election. So th this is going back to the days where if the images were stored on, on um, laser discs, which you had to take out and change to put the, get the right. So it was, uh, image was on 2B and it would hold a thousand images. But, so it was, it was all crazy stuff. So over the years, I've, I've, I've been through that. I went to work at ITV, uh, worked on Cumulus system there. Uh, moved to EMI Records, where we developed a system there. Uh, worked through, had the pleasure and privilege of working at Fox in Los Angeles for a couple of years, um, which again was, was a fantastic experience. And over all that time, it sort of it gets you ready to, to deal with what is thrown at you. Um, which I wouldn't say the art fund's particularly thrown, thrown anything at me. Um, but it's, it's been a steep learning curve. Um, but the, the vendor we've used has been very good as well, uh, very good to talk to. Um, but coming from a, a knowledge base where I think it's quite important to be able to ask the right questions at the right time, which I've been happy to, to be able to do. Indeed. Uh, so some people would like to know what are you doing as an organization to onboard users onto the system uh, and how are, they, how, are they, uh, how are they learning how to use it? Yeah, well, I mean, initially we we wanted to make sure that everybody had direct access to, to the system. So um, there was going to be a limited number of, 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 of users uh, that could be using it at any one time, but we decided that was that, that needed to be changed and everybody needed direct access at any stage they need, they wanted it. So we've created um, single sign-on. Um, so once you're in, once that's you, you're in, you can use it. Um, there are various levels of permissions uh, that we use. Um, and the, I mean, the onboarding at the moment, we, we've got, I, mean, I think the last time we looked of, of about, I think there's about 70 members. Um, I think we had 50 that had been had already used the system, which looks great, but I think we need to make sure that, let's go back and look at when did they last use the system? How often are they using it? How often have they logged on? What are they doing when they're there? So I think it's, it's now it's a constant of, mm -hmm something that I need to do more of, but it's to go around and actually go desk to desk and department to department and actually speak to them and say, how are you using it? Why are you using it? What else would you like us to do? 
because um, we're still in that flexible stage at the moment where we can develop and change it to, to look and be as our users want it to be. Um, again, it's always been one of my beliefs that we don't want it to be something that I think looks great and does what I want it to do. It's all about the user. And we, we set off with a all staff kind of communication, all staff meeting about it, presentation on it. Um, then uh, individual and group training sessions. There's going to be a kind of a super user group set up so that people can bring um, their problems to James, but also ideas. So I think it's really important we also constantly demonstrate the potential and possibilities with this our new dam and that it's not just it, it's also to help people find solutions to some of their problems that they're, they're dealing with with their workplace I also think people because it was it was taking over the old system it was people thought it was just photographs and I think it's that it's the big thing now to know it's not it's going to be video it's going to be document it's going to be brand guidelines it's going to you know in design files it's going to it's going to be whatever you need it to be we can we can take any format that you want and we can make it available for you and I think even before James started, I think we had two different sessions on what is a dam yes. <laughs> for the whole organization. So yeah. that was even a precursor to all that, just because there was obviously a lot of people in the art fund who had never heard of what a dam even was. Mm -hmm. So uh, that whole precursor, and then the one the one to one uh, communication, obviously really um, really good and really important. More questions coming in. Um, so some people would like to know, uh, did you work directly and actively with the vendor during implementation? Uh, and sort of how active was the involvement? How much did you do versus what they did, et cetera? Um, again, I mean, the, the vendor was, was selected before I started. Um, but on the implementation side, uh, very much works hand in hand. And that's you know, one of the things I say about having a, a dam manager is to have somebody there that actually that is what they do. They, they, they deal with the vendor, they, they talk all the time, they, 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 they get instructed on, on implementation, uh, on the ingest process. So through that, um, heavily involved throughout the whole process, um, of which the, the vendor was, 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 was great with. Um, and again, with, the, with you know, learning about the system, learning about the back end, learning how to change things, um, the support was, was excellent and again, as a dam manager, I think if you're if you're speaking to these people on a daily basis, then you you start forming a, a relationship which 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 carries on um, post implementation and, and throughout the support. So we have a specific question about uh, integrations, which are in process <laughs> at the moment. Um, but someone would like to know how you plan to integrate uh, with the CMS and kind of what the technical approach to that is going to be. Maybe we could talk about taking the dam out of the CMS uh, project that we have. Um, yeah, so one of the uh, bits of the, of the kind of sandbox before we went with the, the, the winner from the procurement, so to speak, was to trial integration um, with our uh, web developers, and that went really well. So we, we kind of are pretty confident it's going to work. We haven't yet, <laughs> which was an absolutely crucial thing that obviously we didn't do. The test in, worked. In the test, the worked. test work. <laughs> the, the test work we didn't do back in 2015. Um, but we haven't yet got to that point. What's, what's really interesting now with a focus on the wider technical architecture is um, a lot of discussions about architectural principles over, across all our systems, um, what's being loosely referred to as this API hub. Um, I think we have quite an interesting sort of disparity, if, if I can call it that, between the sort of um, external audience facing systems we have and our kind of back end systems in how integrations would work. And we, we want to we want to sort of get some principles in place so we're not doing these point to point integrations and, and we do it as well as we can. So. That's something we're kind of actively working on now. And uh, as Liz says, uh, the, 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 the sort of unspoken thing in all this is we were hit by a massive CRM project last year, and that's partly what's, um, uh, which again was bringing a sort of siloed system out of a silo and, and, and making it something that, that was at the heart of a integrated technology stack. So, um, Dam's been a bit kind of knocked off, off course by that, but I think as and when we do get to these integrations, we'll be doing them in a better way than we would have done if we'd just been launching into them on a kind of point-to-point -point I think approach. we're at a point where the 
to be fair, the, dis the discussions are just really getting very detailed about, you know, for every sort of image on the website, how are we going to get it out of the dam? What's going to have to happen to it when it's pulled out of the dam? And yeah. How will it have to be transformed? How will it have to be resized? All that. So we've started to really get those requirements and down. I think, you know, there's, there's always more kind of complexity that than meets the eye. So whether versions created on the website should remain on the website, it, you know, actually it's not, it's never quite as neat and clean as you expect it to be and everything will just be in the dam and that it'll just fly through the CMS and, and out there and uh, we'll be able to track exactly where it's got that, that, you know, all the detail is coming out now. But I think we're working through it and, um, yeah, as I say, we're doing, we are doing it in a, a, a kind of overall <coughs> service-oriented architecture principle sort of way uh, across all of our systems. So it makes it slightly longer, but hopefully better in the end. I, th I think we know it can be done, but it's now getting the stage of, okay, exactly how do we do it? And how does it, how does it actually visually look once, once we start to do it with... And I think, yeah, what's really interesting, because you know, originally we had the use cases, which were very external audience or end user focused, um, working out what tech enablers we need to put in place, whether it's an integration between DAM and CMS, uh, or the DAM, and we have a, a, a grant giving system, um, what we want to, ha how we sort of do the roadmap going forward and where the, where the kind of tech enablers fit in and where we're delivering actual business benefits, yeah. use cases that we originally drew up for the procurement is, is quite interesting how that's all panning out. So one last question, because we're out of time. So a year from now, they, they didn't get this question in advance, so <laughs> this will be a little tough. A year from now, if you were to come back, what would you hope would be the top one or two th pieces of you know, success or, or progress that you've made uh, a year from now based on, based on the new dam being launched? I'd hope website integration would happen. We'd have, yeah. yeah but I, I think that or at least we'd have... I, no, I hope we've done that by then. Actually, I, 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 I think I'm you know, I'm just thinking. I hope, yeah, I think we should have done it by then, and I think we will have done a lot of work to get cleaned up with that process, cleaning up images that are living elsewhere, all of these kind of on servers everywhere else. So, kind of really, I, th I hope we'd have tackled quite a lot, a lot of that kind of backlog by then. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think that also a lot around we have a kind of museum self-service piece in our in our website and, and museums upload their own images on exhibitions, mm -hmm. on, on the venues. And I think to make that sort of work the right way and for those images to go directly into the dam, um, I think that would be great. And I think that's definitely achievable. Well, I, th I think for me it would be that I, I'd like people to come to me and be very annoyed if they couldn't find their digital asset on the DAM. So I want, I'd like them to expect to be able to find anything they wanted on the system. Excellent. Well, thank you all for sharing your story. Let's thank our panelists. Thank you.